How's that? Okay. Okay, so yesterday I uh, uh, ended with this theorem, and there was actually, I said strong there, and it should have been extendable for this uh, conclusion. So this showed that, uh, that you couldn't really generalize the L mu type construction even past super strong. Okay, so now we're going to drill a little bit deeper and, uh, and find more obstruction. Okay, so now I need to talk about we can't use extender models. We can't construct from sequences of extenders. So we have to now move to partial extender models. And this is what Martin's been talking about. So let me just uh, remind you, uh, if you have a transitive set, it's rudimentary closed. If those are the properties, closure under the rudimentary functions. But that's really just closure under sigma naught definability and those operations. And then we can define J alpha of P, where P is any set by induction. The usual way, we start um, with nothing, and then as successor step, we take the trans smallest transitive set, which is rudimentarily closed, such that J alpha of P is in, what we already have constructed is in, and such that for every B in M, B intersect, uh, P intersect B is in M. And then we take unions at limits. Now, I'm not going to be doing any fine structure really today, so I don't really care about all the levels. We're going to be focused mostly on the levels where you have ZF minus power set, in which case that's just L alpha of P, and you also have the axiom of choice. So you're constructing from a set, viewing the set as a predicate. You're not putting it in at the bottom. So for example, if, if P intersect L is empty, uh, then J alpha of P is just J alpha. So at this stage, J alpha would just be L alpha. Okay, so now to distinguish extenders, which I talked about yesterday from what I want to talk about today, I'll introduce the notion of a partial extender. Uh, it's simply an M extender for some transitive set that models ZFC minus power set. ZFC minus power set's a nice theory to work with especially when you want to take ultra powers and things. So what's the form of our model? If we have a sequence of partial extenders, uh, um, then uh, for every eta in the ordinals, we'll let J super E sub eta be what you would construct from a predicate. But I have to tell you what predicate, because we have a specific definition of what an extender is, and we can't really construct from that. We wouldn't get anything kind of repatch the extender so that we can construct from it and that's how you do it. It's just the smallest, uh, oh, my first, yeah, so, sorry. This is our extender sequence. We want to construct from it in a meaningful way so we just construct this predicate and then we just do this, okay? So it's the natural way that you would construct from an extender, se a partial extender sequence. Okay, so now something from fine structure theory. Uh, if you have a partial extender sequence and you look at the alpha level of the model that you build, we say it's strongly acceptable uh, if for all beta less than alpha and for all kappa less than beta, if when going from stage beta to beta plus one, you generate a new subset of kappa, then you actually generate a surjection from kappa on to the previous stage. So in J beta plus one, you see that J beta of E is of cardinality less than or equal to kappa. So this is a very strong form of GCH, okay? Whenever you generate a new set, you collapse everything down. Okay, so, so suppose that we have a transitive set it's a model of ZFC minus power set, and E is an M extender, and we let uh, JE from M to the ultra power be the ultra power embedding. There's no problem with taking an ultra power because we're in ZFC minus power set. We get an elementary embedding. Uh, so I, with some notation, let me remind you, kappa E is the critical point of E. That's the critical point of the embedding. Kappa star E, these are ordinals that I, I talked about yesterday. Uh, is the image of the critical point under the ultra power embedding. 
Now I'm going to isolate out something I defined yesterday, the generators. An ordinal less than the length of the extender is a generator. If for any function in M and any finite subset of psi, J E F of A doesn't equal psi. So you can't generate psi from finite subsets of psi by applying the images of functions from M. And then we take the strict soup of all of the generators, and that's the natural length. I defined that yesterday. And then I want to now give, uh, we had the space of the extender. I'm going to repackage that or rename it as iota E. And that's the least cardinal, or the, the least cardinal of M such that the natural length is less than the image of, of gamma under the embedding. That's the space. Okay, it's cardinal always, well, by definition. But uh, Now, an important notion, F is the Jensen completion of the natural length. Uh, if F is the M extender of length eta given by JE, where E is just the image of the cardinal, it's the image of E's successor in N. Okay? So that may there be, you know, so even if there, for example, suppose that the kappa E was the only generator, then the natural length would go way up to the image of kappa plus under the embedding. So the Jensen completion can be much longer. All right, again, we have our transitive set of ZSC minus power set and an extender. Then we'll let uh, space star be the set of M cardinals gamma such that uh, gamma is not a continuity point of the embedding. So soup JE image gamma is strictly less than JE of gamma. And we want there to be a generator in between. Okay, and that should have been less than or equal to psi, my first misprint. Uh, space star is the set of M cardinals for which you get an M ultra filter, basically a uniform M ultra filter on gamma from the extender, and that's the precise formulation. So remember, an extender is just a bunch of ultra filters, and it's of interest to know where these ultra filters live. So they might live on the critical point, in fact, for short extenders, they basically all live on the critical point or the finite subsets of the critical point. But for the kinds of extenders we're interested in now, they might live on kappa plus, the successor of the critical point, or much, much larger cardinals. If you're going to reach supercompactness, you have to deal with such extenders. Okay, so now uh, uh, we want to focus on not arbitrary partial extender sequences. We want to now start imposing some properties. Okay, so this is the notion of a good partial extender sequence. So E is our partial extender sequence. Alpha is in the domain of E. We say it's a good sequence at alpha. If, well, at stage alpha, we're strongly acceptable. We're a model of ZFC minus power set. And we're only looking at the alpha in the domain. E alpha, that's what the sequence is giving us, is a J, is a J E alpha extender. Uh, now we get to indexing E alpha, hmm, another little misprint, uh, is the Jensen completion of E, and alpha is the length of E alpha, and the E is the extender uh, given to us by E alpha. Okay. And then we have a, a coherence condition. If we look at the ultra power embedding by the extender handed to us at stage alpha, uh, then we require that if we move the extender sequence and restrict it to the length of E alpha plus 1, that would be alpha plus 1 because alpha is the index. What? Uh, e was E alpha. So there are three misprint, and more than that, I'm catching Menachem. That's the extender. That's the extender, and that's the extender. They're all the same object, and um, that's the same as this. So this extender has a natural length, and this is just saying that E alpha is the Jensen completion of, the na of that. And now there's the coherence condition. When you move the extender sequence uh, and cut it 
to the length, cut it, this is alpha now, that's the length of the alpha, you just get E restricted to the length of E alpha. Okay. Again, the final version of the slides, I'll correct these misprints and they'll be corrected in the notes. All right, so that's the basic template. I just wanted to, you should just see that to get a flavor of the kinds of models or, or structures that one is attempting to build. The difference is, yesterday we were constructing from extender sequences, now we're constructing from partial extender sequences. The key difference there is when you're constructing from a partial extender sequence at stage alpha where you have an extender, it only measures the sets you currently have. As you generate more sets, that extender is done. Whether or not it remains an extender in the final model depends on whether you generate new subsets of cardinals in its uh, space. Yesterday, we were constructing from extenders, but we kept adding, telling the model how the extenders or the measures of the extender measured the sets. It's the difference between L mu and L of zero sharp. In L mu, you're constructing from mu as an ultrafilter. And the model knows the ultrafilter on all of its sets. But if you follow this approach, when you constructed you, from mu, you'd only construct from mu intersect L. You tell the model, L, what sets of measure one, and that would be it. And then that's essentially zero sharp. Okay, so. The, 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 the insight or the innovation here due to Mitchell and Steele really was don't try to construct from extenders because that makes your life more complicated. Construct from partial extenders, the setup's more complicated, but then things become easier. Okay, so I wanna talk about comparison by least disagreement and I'm gonna introduce this in a very general setting. So I'm not gonna talk about strongly acceptable sequences anymore. That was just to give you a flavor of what the models look like to motivate the abstract setting that I'm about to set up. So I'm not going to be talking about rudimentary functions anymore today, but we'll talk about it again tomorrow. Okay? And I also want to allow this framework to deal with structures where maybe I'm not even uh, L of a partial extender sequence. Maybe there are other predicates present. Okay, so... Um, First, I need to introduce a very general notion. So suppose we have a transitive model of ZFC, and uh, E is a sequence of partial extenders from M, but I'm not assuming that M is constructed from that. Suppose you have two cardinals from M, then, de then delta is witnessed by the partial extenders on the sequence to be lambda supercompact in M if there is an alpha in the domain of the extender sequence such that E is an M extender, the critical point associated to E is delta, lambda is less than the space of the extender, and J E image lambda is an M E where E is the extender given by E alpha and this is the ultra power embedding. Okay. And I guess there's a, s a little typo here. Pardon? One. Well, I, I said here. No, no, I'm okay here. I said E is a partial extender given by E alpha. I'm being unusually precise because the objects E alpha may not actually be an extender. It's the presentation of the extender. So I'm being overly precise and too precise. Okay? Okay, now why do I have this? Because uh, lambda might have cof omega in which case, uh, well, I, I, I don't know why I did that. Who knows? That's less than or equal to is fine. Okay. Uh, all right. This is, the reason I'm making this definition is there are two ways. There are two ways uh, you might have witnesses for supercompactness. You might be witnessing in terms of Magador's reformulation or you might be witnessing in terms of the measure definition. Now, for a supercompact cardinal, those two formulations are the same. But if you're gonna have a bunch of objects providing the witnesses, those are not the same. 
And so I'm shifting to the measure formulation instead of the extender formulation here. That's all. What do you mean when you say the input partial can be given by E alpha? What do you mean to be given? Well, it's not literally E alpha. Well, because E alpha may be a packaging of an extender. An extender I've defined as a specific object, as a, fi as a sequence of ultrafilters. When you construct with, with predicates, that's not the right formulation. So E alpha is a predicate that codes up that information. And literally, the way I defined extender, and the way you encounter this naturally, E alpha may not formally be an extender. It, it's, a, it's, an inter it's a coding of the extender, that's all. So I'm just trying to be, if you go look at, if you go look at a uh, fine structure paper and you see this, and you see this, it's not an extender. It's a presentation of an extender. And I'm just making that point explicit here. All right, so now how are we going to consider structures? Well, we'll be, they're gonna, all the structures are going to be transitive. They'll be of the form ME. Uh, for everything in the domain of E, uh, bold E, the associated object will be an M extender. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't say what I meant. So we're going to be looking at structures like this. M itself may be a structure, but the underlying set is a transitive set. This is a sequence of partial extenders but my conditions are only going to apply for the coordinates where I have get an M extender and where the critical point is less than the space or iota E where E is the partial extender given by what I have at stage beta. Okay, so I'm going to be spelling out these conditions uh, so I'm going to set up some notation iota E I've already defined, it's the space gamma is the successor of the space in M and J is the ultra power embedding. Remember, this is a total extender. Okay, so here are the conditions. So there's a whole bunch of them, but I'll try to motivate them. Uh, there's a suitability condition, and that is the space is less than the image of the critical point, and nothing less than the critical point is witnessed to be less than the critical point supercompact in M by E. Okay. So uh, you can't have a critical point which is super compact by the extenders on the sequence from below. Okay, now I'm going to have a couple of conditions on the nature of super compactness in the model. The reason I'm putting these in is I want to put in conditions that uh, there's strong evidence to, b to believe are going to be true. And I'm weakening the conditions a bit. So suppose that uh, JE image of the space is not in the ultra power. In other words, the extender is not witnessing that kappa E is iota of E supercompact. Then look at the least delta less than the space for which JE image delta is not in. Suppose that delta is less than iota E, then the cofinality of delta must be less than the critical point and either uh, iota, the space, is the successor of delta, or E does not witness that kappa E is delta plus of M supercompact. Okay, so that's just a technical requirement, allowing things to be in the space or space star that don't correspond to supercompactness. Okay. There's a second supercompactness condition, but this only applies when... Pardon? Well, I'm, uh, think of the case uh, I'm at, uh, trying to get past the omega successor of the critical point. Okay? So my embedding, my, my extender might witness, so in this case, uh, uh, this delta might be the omega successor of the critical point. But the extender is putting measures on bigger cardinals than the omega successor of the critical point. Pardon? No. This is just um, the whole issue 
is how are you going to allow um, you be in this situation uh, you might be here's kappa the critical point and it's going up to J of kappa and here's kappa plus omega going up to J of kappa plus omega you might be in that situation this is an M uh, uh, this could actually be a rank initial segment of M so J image of all the finite successors are in the target model but J image of kappa plus omega is not in that's the whole problem now you might have a regular cardinal up here that's not a continuity point now you're not going to require that J image this is in so the question is, when are you going to allow this kind of thing to happen where you skip a level of supercompactness? And we're only going to allow that to happen when the level you're skipping has cofinality less than the critical point. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's, the, well, that's the motivation here. Okay, so, so for example, it, it, you're not allowed to do this. Maybe you have a cardinal here uh, that's a limit cardinal and of cofinality equal to kappa, so it's not a continuity point, say. Then you have soup J image, and you've got all of these super compactness up to there. You're not allowed to put a measure up here unless you have the pointwise image, the J, I'm sorry, J image of gamma in. So if you're in the situation where you're looking at where supercompactness is failing. If that first point has cofinality bigger than or equal to kappa, then all the measures have to concentrate at kappa. You're not allowed to skip. The only time you're allowed to skip and you're forced to skip, that's the whole point of what I'm talking about today or, and tomorrow, is when you're that place where supercompactness is failing by virtue of the extender is a singular cardinal of cofinality less than kappa. Then you're allowed to start putting some measures in up here by virtue of the extender. I'm just talking about the measures that the extender is giving you. Okay? So that's the point of this. It's allowing a failure of, well, for those of you who know the language, this is allowing a failure of the initial segment condition, but only in a very special way. The second supercompactness condition is what I just talked about. Suppose the space of the extender is a successor cardinal, the cofinality of the predecessor is greater than or equal to the critical point, and E witnesses an M that kappa E is lambda supercompact. Then J image of the space has to be in the model, um, and for some, now these are the technical conditions, I probably shouldn't have done this, but Originally, I was going to show you a proof which required this, and that will be in the notes. And again, for those who have seen uh, extender models, this will kind of make sense. So we're in this special situation where it looks like we have the degree of supercompactness that we want, namely, J image of the space of the extenders in the ultra power. That's the good case. And in the good case, uh, there has to be a largest generator. Uh, and then there are two associated initial segment conditions. First of all, uh, there's a largest generator and the initial segments of the extender below that largest generator are all in the ultra power. And the second initial uh, segment condition, if the extender restricted to the largest generator is not in the ultra power, then the cofinality of that largest generator from the point of view of the ultra power is less than the image of the critical point. So for the good extenders, the ones who have the image of their space, uh, there's an initial segment. First of all, there has to be a largest generator, and then there's an initial segment condition. But it's not that all of the proper initial segments are in. You're allowed one failure, but, oops, but that failure has to be associated to the largest generator and that generator has to have cofinality less than the image of the critical point. Okay, so that's the condition. Again, this is what one wants. If one could build the whole theory 
and guarantee that at every stage uh, J image iota E was an element of ME, the whole theory would work and there would be no problem. But what I'm going to be showing is that theory cannot work. Therefore, you cannot require this at every stage. So that's the, that's the problem. Uh, all right. So uh, we have, and finally we have the coherence condition. So these are all the conditions on the extender. We have the coherence condition that um, uh, M, our model restricted to beta is ME restricted to beta. Remember, ME is the ultra power. Beta is the soup of the uh, image of the successor of the space. That's Jensen indexing. So we're assuming that Jensen indexing is being used. Uh, but that requires that this makes sense, right? Because I, you know, what do I mean by this and what do I mean by this? If M is L of E, this is immediate, but we're not assuming that M has this form. Whoops. Uh, but you can make sense of this in any, any reasonable setting, okay? So I won't dwell on it, just granted. We're also going to assume there's a well ordering that's part of our structure of length uh, and uh, such that for all uncountable cardinals gamma of M, uh, the ordering restricted to H gamma in the sense of M is a well ordering of H gamma of length gamma. So we're putting in GCH. I'm not exhibiting the ordering as part of the structure because it would be just notationally a mess. So that's why I'm using uh, this notation. This is a structure that will have the well ordering and everything. This is the thing I'm interested in. So these structures are a model of, of ZFC plus GCH, where M itself is a structure with additional predicates, including the well ordering. Okay. Uh, what I really want, really, and that's all I need, is that every element of M be definable in the structure from ordinal parameters. All right, so because we're in that situation that everything is definable from ordinal parameters, we can make a very useful definition. We'll say that the structure is finitely generated if for some element of M, every element of M is definable in M from A. Okay, and then we'll say an elementary substructure is finitely generated if for some A in M, X is a set of B such that B is definable in ME from A. And because every element is uh, ordinal definable, uh, these both make sense. In particular, this is an elementary substructure. Okay, so it's obvious that uh, an elementary substructure is finitely generated if and only if its transitive collapse is finitely generated. And since every element uh, is definable from ordinal parameters, every element belongs to a subset least. Uh, finitely generated structure. Okay, now I want to bring in backgrounding, which is I need to connect these models to V somehow. So we'll say that our structure is weakly backgrounded at kappa if for all M extenders given by the predicate E, if kappa is the critical point of E and kappa E is less than gamma and J E image gamma is in the ultra power, so the extender is witnessing that kappa is gamma supercompact, and if U is the normal measure calculated in M on P kappa gamma from E, then kappa is a cardinal in V, which is gamma supercompact in V. There's a normal fine kappa complete measure in V whose intersection with M agrees with U. So that's like the, what I was talking about in the weak extender model, okay? But we're acquiring this for all of the measures that come from the sequence E. That's why I need to specify the sequence, okay? Again, if you're building this in any in normal way by modern methods, uh, you would expect this. So I'm just trying to pull out conditions we expect to be true. Uh, and the whole model is weakly backgrounded if it's weakly backgrounded at kappa for all kappa. Okay, so those are the two notions. It's just M has a design our structure has a designated sequence of extenders. Some of those extenders are generating supercompactness measures, and all of those measures have to come from B. Okay. 
Okay, that's weak background. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to connect with iteration trees, but I'm not going to define iteration tree. We're going to talk about a certain kind of iteration of M, and I'm going to call it a semi-iteration. So unlike iteration trees, which was a tree of embeddings, a semi-iteration is just a linear directed system, continuous at limits, such that the following hold for all alpha less than beta less than eta, where E alpha is the N alpha extender, given by the embedding that goes from N alpha to N alpha plus one. Whenever you have an embedding from one ZFC model to another, you have an extender. Okay, so the first model is the model. All right, remember, I'm defining what a semi-iteration of ME is. So the first model in this sequence has to be ME. And now it's just all the conditions I wrote about the extender E alpha. So E alpha has to satisfy all the conditions that I wrote down in the, the specifying our class of structures. So these, there's the first supercompactness condition. These are just the conditions repeated. Okay. So it would be as if N alpha, N alpha is one of our structures. It would almost be like E alpha was chosen from the E sequence, but we can't require that. It's chosen from some other ME type structure on the sequence of that structure. And that's why I can put these conditions. The one new condition, which is really important, is this closeness condition. That if you take any of the measures associated to the extender E alpha, remember that was the extender that's taking you from N alpha to N alpha plus one, that measures in N alpha. I'm not saying that E alpha is in N alpha, I'm just saying all of its measures are in. Okay? And now with this, so, what, is, what this kind of iteration is, what I'm trying to capture here is the kind of iteration map you would get from a branch through a maximal iteration tree. So there was an overlapping, a non-overlapping condition right here. That's the non-overlapping condition. That uh, alpha is less than beta, the image of the critical point on the alpha embedding is less than the critical point at the next. So as you move along the iteration, you start with the initial model, M0, ME, and then you're just applying some M extender to get the next model. Then that's giving you the next model, N1, E1, we'll say. And then you're applying an extender, but the critical point of the next extender has to be bigger than or equal to the image of the previous uh, extender. So it just looks like this. Okay. So it looks like a branch through an iterate through a weekly maximal iteration tree. Pardon? So it, the alpha extender is I have an embedding from N alpha to N alpha plus one. That gives me an extender over N alpha. That's E alpha. That's all. I'm not saying that E alpha is in N alpha or on the sequence. I'm not saying it's on the sequence of any, any structure. I'm just saying that the extender that takes you from N alpha to N alpha plus one looks like it could be on a sequence of some structure. That's all. I'm trying to get the most general notion that I can because I want to show, show that something can't happen. So I want to, in other words, I'm trying to get the weakest notion of comparison that one can formulate, so I want to put as few conditions on this as possible. Okay. Remember, the title is a failure of comparison. All right, so that's a semi-iteration. The two differences are there's a non-overlapping condition three that corresponds to a maximal branch through an iteration tree, but I'm not defining iteration trees. No reason to. And there's this closeness condition. For those of you who've seen fine structure theory, this is an important condition. All right, so here's the abstract form of comparison. Suppose we have a structure 
okay? Then we're going to say it satisfies comparison if for all elementary substructures of the structure, the following hold. Suppose x and y are finitely generated, and x doesn't equal y, and they have the same reals. So x intersect r is y intersect r. So I have two finitely generated substructures. I'm going to make them not equal, otherwise it's trivial. Uh, but the two finitely generated substructures have to have the same reals in them. Remember, finitely generated meant you're definable from a point in the structure. Then there exists two semi-iterations, uh, one of one, the one structure and one of the other, such that they end up in the same model. So you can, by semi-iterations, go to the same model. There's not one being any kind of initial segment of the other, because it can't, to the same model. But I want to put in that this is by disagreement. So I require that the first extenders of the iterations, uh, these are the associated extenders to the embeddings, are unequal. And then I say, I want to put in, if you have uh, the space of the first extender of this iteration, soup, the space of the first extender of this iteration, both contained in lambda, cardinal of the initial of m sub x, and m sub y, and suppose these models have the same uh, power set of lambda, then the embeddings disagree on the power of lambda. So you disagree on the first extender, and the whole iteration map has to have a disagreement on a point where the models have agreement. Okay, A very weak form of agreement. So it's just saying... I mean, this is... Uh, this is obvious for least disagreement. You wouldn't, if you're doing a comparison by least disagreement, you would apply the fr extenders of disagreement. And then that may not be the extenders of the final iteration, but you would expect the first extenders not to be the same along the final iteration. And this is saying the iteration maps can't be in agreement on a part of the, uh, on too much of the model. So this is an abstraction of what you would expect uh, in a comparison argument where you're iterating by least disagreement. I guess I should say what you know, I mean by iterating by least disagreement. In fine structure theory, you have two structures, and they're not the same. Otherwise, there's not much to do. So what do you do? You look at the first place they differ. That means you have an extender on one side, maybe not on the other, or you may have an extender on the other side in disagreement, and you apply those extenders. And that's your algorithm. Okay, the, the complication in a partial extender model is that disagreement may involve a partial extender that doesn't measure all the sets in the model. And what do you do? Well, that's where fine structure theory saves you. You have to drop into an initial segment. But these are the features that would happen in any uh, comparison argument by least disagreement. All right, so there's an abstract notion of comparison and it's a strong condition, especially for weak. So, look, suppose every element of M was definable in M. This is true, because there are no X and Y which are different. So the tension comes, we want to make M really big, so that there are lots of finitely generated substructures. But wait a minute, we already have a condition that makes M very big, weakly backgrounded. A weakly backgrounded structure cannot be countable if it's got supercompacts in it. It's got to be really, really big. Okay, so uh, the positive theorem, uh, suppose you have the weak omega 1 plus 1 iteration hypothesis, uh, then there is a partial extender sequence E, such that L of E is weakly backgrounded, E is weakly sigma 2 definable, L of E satisfies comparison. And for every ordinal, for every C ordinal psi, there's an ordinal in the domain, alpha bigger than psi, E alpha is an L of E extender, which witnesses that kappa is omega extendable in L of E, and that's the definition of omega extendability. So that's the positive theorem. 
needs this hypothesis. Uh, we're getting comparison in this abstract sense, but we have uh, weak backgrounding, so we got it's a non-trivial notion. Okay, so now I want to talk, I'm really not going to get through everything. Um, well, now I want to talk about pairs of models. So suppose I have two models. We'll say it's a co coherent pair, two structures, sorry. It's a coherent pair at kappa. They have the same successor, and they're in agreement up to the successor. If we restrict the one structure to the kappa plus, it's the same as the other structure restricted to kappa plus. So there's no disagreement below kappa plus. Now we want to talk about a semi-iteration of the ordered pair. So this is like an iteration where this is the first model, this is the second model, and we're going to require in the iteration, there's going to be a requirement where you had to have come back to this model. Uh, so, here, the, it's, it's, here are the conditions. There's again a continuously uh, linearly directed system. Uh, each E alpha is the n extender given by the map that goes from pi alpha to pi alpha plus one. The first model is one of these two models. The whole thing is an iteration of that model. And if, now here's a requirement, if n zero is the M1, it's this model, then kappa must be less than uh, iota for some uh, iota in the in this space star of E0. So if you think of E0 as an extender, uh, uh, well, just that. You, you're only allowed to choose this model and work from that in this semi-iteration if the very first extender you use want to use has to have space bigger than kappa. Okay. All right. So uh, suppose that we have one of our structures. Suppose u is a normal measure on kappa and u intersect m is in m. We can take the ultra power inside m by u intersect m. We get a pair of structures. Let's suppose that's a coherent pair of kappa then MU, EU satisfies comparison backed up by ME if the following happen. Uh, we take two fine, we take now just one finitely generated substructure which can, oops, which contains that measure. And we take its transitive collapse and we take the images of, of these objects under the transitive collapse. Then there's a semi-iteration of of m sub x and a semi-iteration of the pair uh, at kappa x such that the final models are in agreement. It's the same requirements on all of the extenders. Uh, the, well, these are semi-iterations, so we have the first and second disagreement conditions exactly as before. Okay, so a lemma which I was going to prove, but in the interest of time I won't. It's, it's just a simple case of uh, the universality theorem that I proved yesterday. Suppose we have a structure and it's weakly backgrounded. Suppose in the structure delta is witnessed by the partial extenders on our sequence to be super compact in M. Suppose kappa is a, above delta in the ordinals of M and U is a delta complete ultrafilter on kappa then U intersect M is an M. So if you have a weakly backgrounded structure, it has all the measures on anything bigger than delta. Okay, so this is a variation of that remarkable closure condition of weak extender models. This is a weak extender model. Well, it's not a weak extender for delta supercompact because ORD M is not ORD. If ORD M was ORD, this ME would be a weak extender model for supercompact by weak backgrounding. So it's just a variation of that proof, and it's not hard, and I'm not going to show it to you except very quickly. There it is. Okay? It, it, it's easy. Okay, this is what I should have focused on today. In the last 10 minutes, I uh, hopefully can prove at least one lemma for you, which is a, an acute lemma. Uh, suppose. Uh, we have one of our structures, so this definition makes perfect sense in an, uh, for any model ZFC. 
uh, suppose we have an elementary embedding uh, from M from our structure into another one then we say pi is close to M E if for every X in M and every point in pi of X look at the induced ultrafilter on the power of X given by pi uh, that's in M so any elementary embedding between two models of ZSC gives you ultrafilters that measure the sets in the first model unless it's the identity and what it's saying is those ultrafilters are all in the model okay. so we've already seen an example of this the embedding given by a semi-iteration is a close embedding well from successive steps of a semi-iteration is a close embedding okay so now we're going to, going to prove that semi-iteration maps are close and all it comes down to is observing that clo the composition of close embeddings is close because in a semi-iteration when you move from n alpha to n alpha plus one that embedding was close that was the closeness condition so if we can show that compositions of close embeddings are close we're done and that's an easy calculation which I'm not going to let you see because I don't have time and it's in the, it will be in the notes okay it's a good exercise it, it's quite easy what you do is we're trying to take a point here and look at its ultra filter here and we need to show that that ultra filters here under the composition well the point here induces an ultra filter here the ultra filter here is a point which then induces an ultra filter that's here and that enables you to calculate the ultra filter that this point induces by the composition and that's what this is doing okay so it's an easy calculation okay here is an amusing fact and uh, it's in, in fine structure theory it's important to know that certain maps are unique there's a Dodd Jensen lemma this is an abstract version of that no fine structure theory just uses closeness so suppose ME is a model of ZSC and finitely generated now suppose you have two embeddings from ME into the same model and these two embeddings are each close then the embeddings are the same so there may be many ways to map a finitely generated structure into a target structure but there's only one way to do it if the embedding is to be close and that's going to turn out to be a really powerful tool so what do we do we, t we fix an ordinal such that every element of M is definable in ME from psi that exists because it's finitely generated and we just have to show that pi zero of psi is pi one of psi that unique C embedding okay so we let psi zero be uh, where pi zero is sending psi and we let psi one be where pi one is sending psi and let's assume toward a contradiction that psi zero is less than psi one all right well now we're going to use closeness we can pull we can use z psi zero relative to the pi one embedding to define an ultra filter and that ultra filter is in m by closeness and then we can let ju be the ultra power embedding by that ultra filter and let ku be the factor embedding and uh, because uh, it follows a pi one is ku composed with ju okay so now we can let a psi u upper u be the element of mu the ultra power uh, represented by the identity function so ku of that ordinal is psi zero just chasing through how everything works I mean I guess I should do the calculation is why is there a factor map why does this actually embed I mean what and that's a standard calculation okay well now let's let uh, nx fx be the transitive collapse of x where x is the set of all a in n such that a is definable in n from psi zero remember psi zero is where pi zero sent psi so this is the original model 
right? Because ME thinks everything's definable from psi. Pi zero is sending psi to psi zero. And so, uh, and what, so that tells us that uh, NX, FX is ME. But X is a subset of the image of MU under this factor embedding. Why? Because psi u is KU of psi u zero, and since pi one is KU composed with JU. Further, KU of psi u zero is equal to psi zero, which is less than pi one of psi, and that's KU composed with JU of psi. So you put this all together, and what do you see? You see that uh, psi u zero, that's the thing represented by the identity function, is less than where j u sends psi. Let x u be all the things in m u definable from this and take its transitive collapse. Well, that's m e. So now, uh, let, uh, look at this ultra power embedding, invert the transitive collapse of x u. That's not uh, the ultra power embedding, necessarily. Uh, that is the ultra power embedding. Pi u, what, well, sorry. That is the ultra power embedding. So we have a canonical elementary embedding from the ultra power of m u by the ultra power of m u by pi u of u. I think there's a typo here. And now one can generate an ill-founded iteration. What you're doing is you're starting with, yeah, now we have this magic ultra filter. Now from the point of view of M, we, the ultra filter is a uniform ultra filter on psi, and we take its ultra power. Here there's an ordinal represented by the identity function, psi u zero. Now this is not a normal ultra filter, so we don't know that that's psi. But if we take the hull, we get an isomorphic copy of the original model. And then we see where U goes under that, and that's our next ultra power. We just keep iterating, and we're going to end up doing this and generating an ill-founded uh, iteration of length omega. And that's a contradiction. You can't have an ill-founded uh, iteration of a model of ZFC of length omega that's internal where the measures don't go co-final in the ordinals and they don't because they're always staying below the image of a, of a given ordinal. Okay, so that's the uniqueness of the embeddings. So here's the theorem. So technical, uh, suppose we have super compact, omega is bigger than delta is strongly inaccessible, uh, then there's no weakly backgrounded structure whose height is omega, such that delta is witnessed by the extenders on the sequence to be super compact in M, such that there exists a, an immeasurable cardinal below the ordinals of M, a normal ultra filter, such that the following hold, this is a coherent pair at kappa, U intersect M is an M, and MUEU satisfies comparison backed up by ME at kappa. Okay, so why is this of any interest? Well, because this is a weakly backgrounded structure, this is automatic. That was our special case of universality. The, measure, the model is closed under all ultra filters that are delta complete, no matter where they live. So that, I just put that there to make sense of it. Th th this theorem is saying these objects don't exist. So you might say, oh, the problem is being a coherent pair. But they're always going to be all, if you have enough large cardinals in V in this gap, they're going to be the very strong embeddings that cohere M. So they're going to be plenty of coherent pairs. So then this has to fail. Right? Well, if you were looking at the current methodology of building extender models, uh, the, and you had a theory of comparison by least disagreement, the, the current iterability proofs would show that ME, MUEU is iterable backed up by ME in a way that makes you able to prove comparison. So the current methodology has to fail. All right, so I wasn't going to try to give the proof. I have two minutes. 
Uh, maybe I should just stop here. Let me just show you the first bit. You zoom toward a contradiction that you have the M and U, and you look at the ultra power embedding within ME using U. Now you take, your, you take the elementary substructure given by the set of all A and M, which are definable in M from U intersect M. So that's a finitely generated structure. And now we just take the transitive collapse of everything in sight and we put X's and U's to indicate the images under the collapse. So MX, EX is the image of the collapse. MXU, EXU is the image of MU, EU under the collapse. EXU, I'm just, we have uh, objects of interest. Our objects of interest are this, this, this embedding. With those three objects are our objects of interest. They are all essentially in or definable from elements of X, so they all have tra appear in the transitive collapse. And that's what all these X's are doing. Oh, we have other objects of interest. Uh, we have kappas in, and we have delta, but delta, uh, did I put delta in? I should have put delta in if I didn't. Okay. All right, so these are, okay, it satisfies comparison backed up by, by ME at kappa. So uh, we get these two semi-iterations of the pair. This is a co will be a coherent pair. That was part of the hypothesis. Uh, they end up at the same model. The first two extenders of the iterations are different. And then we have a disagreement if the models are agree uh, on the power of theta, the initial models, then the whole embeddings have to disagree on the power of theta. Okay? Here's the key claim. And I probably in my minus two minutes can prove the key claim. We have two maps. We have, the claim is that the first model on the one side, so that's where we're iterating uh, the pair must be the ultrapod. The, we had a pair of models on the pair side, the model and the ultra power. And the claim is that the sem semi iteration has to start with the ultra power. Now we have two maps from the initial model. We have the iteration on the other side, which is just an iteration of MX. We have the ultra power embedding of MX followed by the iteration map because this tells us the iteration map started with this model. And the key claim is that these two maps are the same. And you can kind of see what it's going to be. They're the same because of the uniqueness of close embeddings. So we first have to show that the initial model on the pair side is that model. Well, if it wasn't, we would have two iteration maps from the same model into the same final model. And they're each close, right? So the, the embeddings agree. And that's a violation of the disagreement requirement. So the model on the pair side cannot be, this is the pair side, cannot be that. Well, therefore, it has to be that. All right. so. That says on the pair side, the initial model must be the ultra power model. So now we have the embedding on the unpair side that takes the initial model to here. And now we have the composition that takes the same model to here. These are each embeddings of this finitely generated model into the same structure. We have that this is close because it's a semi iteration. This is close to that because it's a semi iteration. But EU is close to MU, it's an internal ultra power. Therefore, the composition is close because close embeddings are close under compositions. So that means that the two embeddings are the same. So now once we know the two embeddings are the same, it whole thing just becomes a technical calculation where you have to use all the properties of the semi-iterations. That's where the first supercompactness condition, the second, the initial segment conditions, all those have to appear somewhere, and it's in the notes. So, so I went over, terrible to go over before lunch, 
but it's great to go over when there's a picture session looming because uh, maybe it will get postponed. And um, anyway, so the notes will have all the details. The bottom line is this is an argument that based on reasonable expectations on how the extender sequences have to look, that comparison by least disagreement must fail if the iterability proof for these structures looks anything like what's being done now. So it's an important clue. Okay, and then tomorrow we'll be giving more information. Or not tomorrow, day after tomorrow. So thank you. <laughs>